There is a rare consensus at the White House and on Capitol Hill this morning over how the Internal Revenue Service dealt with Tea Party and other conservative political groups. Lawmakers have called for hearings later this week. The president was blunt that the actions will not be tolerated. This is pretty straightforward. If, in fact, uh, IRS personnel engaged in uh, the kind of practices that have been reported on, uh, and were intentionally targeting uh, conservative groups, then that's outrageous. And there's no place for it. Uh, and uh, you know, they have to be held fully accountable uh, because the IRS, as an independent agency, requires absolute integrity, and people have to have confidence that they're applying it in a nonpartisan way. Since the Supreme Court's Citizen United ruling that allowed unlimited campaign contributions, hundreds of political groups have applied to be tax-exempt organizations called 501c4s. The designation allows them not to disclose their donors, but requires that politics cannot be the group's primary activity. According to a Treasury Department timeline, IRS specialists first began singling out Tea Party groups in March of 2010. The groups complained, and more than a year later, in June of 2011, the House Ways and Means Committee sent the first of three letters to the IRS asking if it was targeting conservative groups. The IRS said no, insisting the agency was apolitical and nonpartisan. But later that same month, an IRS division head, Lois Lerner, was informed that agents in Cincinnati had been instructed to scrutinize Tea Party applications for tax-exempt status. She instructed that the criteria be immediately revised. The IRS never acknowledged the targeting. Even a year later, in March of 2012, when IRS Commissioner Doug Schulman was asked about it in a Ways and Means Committee hearing. There's Absolutely no targeting. This is the kind of back and forth that happens when people apply for uh, 501c4 status. Shulman, a Bush appointee, left the agency of November of 2012 when his five-year term expired. The IRS claims Shulman wasn't aware of the targeting at the time he testified, despite the actions his own deputy, Lois Lerner, had taken to put an end to the practice 17 months earlier. On Friday, three years after IRS specialists were told to be on the lookout for Tea Party applications, the agency finally admitted its mistake, and then only because the Treasury Department, which investigated the matter at the request of Congress, was about to release its damaging findings. You don't want the IRS ever uh, being uh, perceived to be biased and anything less than neutral in terms of how they operate. So uh, this is something that I think people are, are properly concerned about. For more on how the IRS drama is unfolding, with us is Lauren French, a tax policy reporter with Politico, who's been covering the scandal. Lauren, thank you so much for being here with us. You have written an article, you, and you posed the five questions that needed to be asked about this. So I'm going to start with your first question in your article. Does this turn on what did they know and when did they know it? Absolutely. So what came out Friday when Lois Lerner were talking, was talking to reporters was that she said at least she heard about this when news reports were coming up, which would really imply in the run up to the 2012 election. But as that IG report is coming out, it, learns, it turns out that she actually knew about a year earlier in June of 2011. That doesn't really comply with what she told reporters. And now we're hearing that both former Commissioner Doug Schulman and now acting Commissioner Steve Miller were informed in May of 2012. Now, of course, that is after Schulman testified before the House Ways and Means Committee. Now, yeah, and so much of this just turns on who knew what and when. And, of course, you just mentioned uh, Doug Schulman, who was the IRS commissioner at the time that this was happening. Uh, to my understanding, he's not being called to testify in the hearing on Friday. Um, what do you make of that? You know, he's not a government official anymore. He's in the private sector. He has been out of the, uh, the pr public sector for about six months now. 
it's not out of the realm of possibility that he'll be called to testify in the future, but I think the focus is right now going to Steve Miller, who is the acting IRS commissioner. Now, he, in, in at least two incident, incidences after he was informed about this targeting program, wrote to Congress talking about these 501c4s, but never made mention of the IRS's targeting. So I think lawmakers are really focusing in on him right now as the acting head of the agency. Uh, I have a question about 501c4s and how they operate on both sides when you're talking about uh, Democrats and Republicans, because there is the, uh, the idea that the majority of your work cannot be political work, and they assign some number to it, like 51%. Um, yeah. But it does become a way that on both sides that anonymous donors can fund, and you have the super PAC kind of ads and uh, that, that really uh, exclude people from from the process, you know, common folk who uh, who want to get their voices out, uh, people who are not wealthy donors in terms of, you know, the issues uh, that are concerning community people. Yeah, this is a huge issue. This has come up since the Citizen United Supreme Court case, and this is the dark, the secret money that everyone talks about when they're discussing money in politics. What happens is these groups, these 401 or 501c4s, don't have to disclose their donors. People are allowed to give unlimited money to these groups, and they can run advocacy ads, so it's social advocacy for issues, for uh, you know, different things that they care about. And it's supposed to be less about, please vote for candidate X and more about this issue is important to us. Of course, they can do a little of the former, but it's supposed to be, like you said, less than 51% po actual political work. You know, I want to go back, Lauren, to some of the political ramifications of this whole scandal. Of course, uh, President Bush, or excuse me, President Obama came out yesterday and was absolutely outraged, saying he just learned about this scandal on Friday. He said it would not be tolerated uh, and uh, that if wrongdoing uh, did happen, that there would be consequences. Was that enough? Might he also uh, face some blowback from this? I think it's very uh, early to tell whether or not what the long-lasting ramifications for the president specifically will be. Now, of course, Republicans are not happy with his administration when it comes to this targeting scandal. Uh, but he did come out. He said it was unacceptable. The key thing here is that the president doesn't actually have the ability to fire anyone at the IRS beyond uh, two political appointees. So Lois Lerner, who is the uh, head of this program, that did the targeting, she's actually a public servant, so to, for, to remove her would have to go through the you know, ordinary process. So it's really hard for him to promise that people will be held responsible because he doesn't have that authority. Now what's likely to happen is that Congress is going to have Steve Miller come before and testify, and we're going to see what really happened, who knew, and whether or not they, Congress was misled. But when it comes to the president, the much more likely outcome is that this is just going to really fray relationships that he was building with Republicans. He's been on that charm offensive, offensive, you know, courting Republicans with dinner and golf outings to try to build allies on the other side of the aisle for gun control, immigration, debt deals. And this just hands the GOP, even moderate GOP uh, Republicans like Senator Susan Collins, who said that this was unacceptable. Uh, and it hands them a, an issue. It hands them a lot of distrust for both the IRS and mm -hmm. the Obama administration. So the, the long-term ramifications are probably going to be that, it, that making those compromises with Republicans is going to be much tougher after this. Well, you know what, he's, he's uh, certainly um, going to be under the spotlight as well as what was happening in the IRS. My question for you, Lauren, is what might come of these hearings? Uh, I, I think it's a foregone conclusion that somebody's going to lose their job behind this. But uh, could this result in uh, criminal charges? It's very possible. Obviously, it is against the law to mislie to Congress, and I think that's going to be at the, the crux of what lawmakers are trying to figure out on Friday and then when the House Oversight Committee and the Senate Finance Committee eventually hold their hearings. Stephen Miller is going to testify, and he's going to get a lot of criticism for writing those two letters to Congress, one of them specifically sure. to the House Ways and Means Committee, where he didn't mention this program despite knowing for at least four months at that point. So you can be guaranteed Dave Camp, uh, Congressman Bustani, who hold or who oversees the Oversight Committee directly overseeing the IRS, they're going to ask some pretty tough questions of him and want to know specifically why didn't you tell us when we asked? Yeah, it's, it, you're absolutely right. It's going to be very interesting, if not fiery. Lauren French, thank you so much. We appreciate having you. 
Absolutely. Thank you so much.